Now, most of you know I really do not like to talk about culture war stuff because it is pointless to discussing at the end of the day because at the end of the day, it has no policy. It doesn't matter that, you know, the National Trust want to look into properties regarding their connections and past to slavery. So what? That, that really does nothing. Um, you know, Britain has... Britain's past is connected to slavery. Like it or not, that is just a fact. And it seems that a lot of people really don't like to acknowledge that fact. And it's like... Um, denial of reality much. But it's not surprising that most of those, you know, reality deniers, or shall we say history deniers, um, are also Brexiteers. Um, because they've come to think that if they can shout loud enough that somehow it'll go away or they'll get their way. And once again, um, this is coming up again, but it's pointless really to talk about because... It's got no policies. Liz Truss has, has talked about her abandoning the woke agenda. Okay, so what does that mean policy-wise? What does that actually mean? In the long term, it just means nothing. It's just, you know, it's it's like it's, it's, it goes harkens back to the um, to the Brexit days of of sovereignty and taking back control. And this is just yet another form of Trumpism that the Tories are trying to import from America and we really really need to stamp it out so we really need to point out that these guys have no policy when it comes to talking about it they'll talk about it but what does that actually mean policy wise and if it doesn't mean anything policy wise then essentially it, it's just meaningless why are you talking about it why are you bringing it up so we're going to cover this article today because I think again it is important to talk about so this comes from the Guardian and the Tory class agenda is a culture war stunt that will leave inequality untouched. So, woke orthodoxy abolished. A landmark speech. A counter-revolution. One couldn't miss the fawning from certain sections of the media. Whoever is responsible for, equ for Equalities Minister Liz Truss' spin definitely deserves their Christmas bonus. Truss, who doubles up as International Trade Secretary, gave a speech on Thursday to the Centre of Policy Studies that promised to, quote, reject the approach taken by the left, captured, captured as they are by identity politics and loud lobby groups, to, quote, dump a fashionable postmodernist philosophy pioneered by... Uh, by Flukat, and instead to, quote, root the equality debate in real concerns people face. So, take away the cultural war rhetoric and the anti-woke bombast, however, and there was little that moved beyond the bland. This is not right, she said, that having a particular surname or accent can sometimes make it harder to get a job. It is appalling that a pregnant woman suffer discrimination at work and they, and they have to, quote, dress in a certain way to get ahead. That employers overlook the capabilities of people with disabilities and outrageous that LGB, LGT people still face, still face harassment. No mainstream politician past 25 years ago would have disagreed. Though, if someone on the left had said all that, they would probably be denounced for, pres presuming the, for pursuing the, quote, woke orthodoxy by the same voices now laundering Truss's counter-revolution. She dressed it all up as a demonstration of conservative values. What is actually revealed is to what degree to which liberal orthodoxies have become accepted in Britain, including uh, by the conservatives. And her media admirers hailed the speech as her dumping the politics of identity and the restoration of class to the inequality discussion. Except that she only mentioned class once and then to talk of the quote white working class. It was a less critique of identity politics than the pursuit of identity politics of a different kind. Beyond the left baiting applause lines there was little of actual substance. Trust promised to end the unconscious bias training and look into, quote, more flexible working. But there was nothing about the policies that would actually bring about her more egalitarian world. 
and this is what we've discussed before you know if you don't have policies then what was the point of her doing this this speech you know she just stood there and essentially said nothing and again the, the article points it out quite rightly the 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 media that fought over it saying oh it's such a which a wonderful we're finally having this counter revolution yeah if if a you know if someone on the left had said this again these policies no you know no politician with at least the past 25 years or more you know would disagree with these points you know we'd be quote as it said there calling quote uh, you know following the woke agenda again it just goes to show you how pointless culture war stuff actually really is unless there is actual you know policy behind it and of course this is going to have a huge impact because this means now the conservatives are playing you know identity politics even though they wouldn't admit it um nothing is going to happen because there is no policy to it and that will just make inequality even worse So anyway, <clears throat> sorry, it continues. So, nor any more explanation of how a, quote, anti-inequality agenda squares with the actual policies of this government. With the refusal to raise statutory sick pay to half a decent amount in the midst of a pandemic, while condemning workers not taking time off when ill. With the unwillingness to make payment of the universal credit COVID uplift of twenty of, of, of twenty pounds, meaning millions of Britain in the poorest families could lose over a thousand pounds next year in the spring, and with the reluctance to extend free school meals into holidays until forced to do so twice by Marcus Rushford, with the entrenched cronyism that mocks Truss's claim that fairness, not favouritism, drives our approach. With the views of the leader of the house, Jacob rees mogg who seemed more angry about UNICEF pulling a, quote, political stunt by feeding hungry children in Britain than those children actually being hungry in the first place. According to the Trussell Trust, one UK household in 50 uses a food bank, of which there are more 2,000 across Britain. The number of three-day emergency parcels the charity delivers has soared from 35,000 in 2019 to 10 to almost 2 million in 2019-20. Given Truss's concern for the working white class, is it not worth noting that 93% of those receiving food parcels are actually white? And according to Rhys Mogg, this is not a scandal, but an occasion for self-congratulation. The state can't do everything, so I think there is a good. Uh, so I think there is good within food banks. He told the caller on LBC three years ago. The real reason for the rise in the numbers of people using food bank food banks is, of course, thanks to the Tories. People know, uh, uh, people know that they're there, whereas Labour deliberately just didn't tell them. There are, of course, uh, there are, of course, the conservative values that helped people in with helped people and entrench inequality. <coughs> On the day that Trust gave her speech, the Spectator published an interview with the Chancellor Ricky Sunak. If we think borrowing is the answer to everything, then debt then debt rising is fine. Then there's not much difference between us and the Labour Party. I worry about what the, that means for us politically down the line. He told the magazine. Uh, meaning that debt, debt reduction and the political issue that disguises the Tory party is a promise of public expenditure cuts, the same approach that led to the disastrous and unnecessary policy of austerity that was pursued after 2010. It is not a policy that any government seriously tackling inequality would even countenance. Historically, Britain has become steadily less uh, unequal in the early decades of the post-war period. Inequality shot up, however, in the 1980s, when pursuing, quote, conservative values. Margaret Thatcher oversaw the demise of large swathes of manufacturing industry, the destruction of the working-class communities, and the muzzling of trade unions. Since then, levels of equality have changed little. Throughout the years and after 2010, the percentage of children and private renters in, in relative poverty has risen sharply. It is not uh, the rise of the postmodern left, but the demise of the working class organisation that has so entrenched inequality. 
Indeed, the Thatcherite attacks on the labour movement went hand in hand with the attacks of minorities, from the moral panics about, about uh, from the moral panics about black muggers to the Section 28 assault on gays and lesbians. It is true that the section of the left have moved away from addressing working class problems, and that the working class figures too little in many debates about inequality. We should not, however, confuse ideological shifts on the left, troubling, uh, troubling though they may be, with material reasons for equality and poverty. Truss's speech was less serious rethink. Uh, was a less serious rethink about how to actually tackle inequalities than a facade in the culture wars masquerading as a grand policy statement. The risible attempt to make the, quote, equalities agenda an alibi for failures to change so social injustice, there is something cynical about putting the needs of minorities against those of the working class. We have never been, at the, which has actually never been properly addressed. I have long been critical of the policies of identity, sceptical of, quote, diversity, an approach of many forms of, of contemporary anti-racism, and question the failure to take seriously the inequalities of class. I have even critiqued for, for, uh, for Sally, even though after I've actually, uh, even though only after actually having read him. I am equally critical, though, of a far, of a fox egalitarian agenda that leaves inequality untouched and seeks to play the culture, war, uh, culture wars gallery be prepared we will undoubtedly hear much more such speeches as the Tories ready the groundwork to claim that the issues that the, the, the issues as theirs even as they push through policies to exasperate inequalities yeah um you know i i, I fully agree but prepare for you know austerity on steroids um you know, that's going to make, you know, the the austerity pushed by the Conservatives in 2010 look like days of plenty. And a lot of people are going to suffer. A lot, a lot of people. And, you know, this is the cover that they're going to use. They're going to use the culture war tactics, by the looks of it, to try and masquerade um, why their policies are failing. Oh, you don't understand. It's the woke agenda that's that's causing this policy to fail, even though when you look at the policy, it is that which is causing it to fail. So this, again, is something that we are going to have to really tackle. So, uh, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you all soon. Have a wonderful Christmas. Of course, do remember to hit that like and share button on the way out. And, of course, down below, there is a link to my Patreon page and a link to a one-off donation uh site as well so thank you very much for all those who do support me that way and with that said thanks for watching have a very happy christmas and we'll see you all very soon